All right. Today, we'll start preparing for the ORC micro bit challenge. Uh, first things first, let's read the rules and see if it gives us an idea of what needs to be done to create a good project. Uh, to find the rules, go on the ORC website, uh, challenges, micro bit, uh, then mixtape challenge, then mixtape challenge rules. For this challenge, um, you need to create a music player that must include at least three melodies with a different icon displayed on the LED display for each melody. Uh, you also need to make your melodies play in order and restart the first melody after the last one is done. Then your music player must have at least two features using buttons, such as volume up, volume down, mute, unmute, reset to first melody, um, or next or previous. Um, in the bonus points section, uh, it says you can earn bonus points if you include more than two button features. Also, um, all the melodies and LED icons have to be original and you can't use the preset melody. Um, now, um, now we can split the project into three main components. So the first one, is we need to create at least three melodies, but I guess if you can create more, it will increase your chances of winning. Uh, create custom icons, and then create a program that will play melodies, display icons, and implement features. Today, we'll look at playing sounds and creating melodies on Microbit. A Microbit offers several options to do that, and they're all in the music tab here. Uh, so here we can play a melody uh, with a set amount of tones with a certain tempo. Here uh, we can play certain tones, change the volume, change the tempo. And here we can play default melodies and default sounds, which we unfortunately uh, cannot do just because of the challenge rules. Uh, so one of the options to play music on Microbit is using a group of functions called tone. So these here. And with a play tone uh, block, we can play a tone of a specific frequency for a specific duration. So here, let's just create an event handler for the A button. And so when the A button is pressed, it'll play this tone. This is what it sounds like. Um, now, uh, for convenience, there's a piano keyboard attached to this block. Uh, if you can play piano, you can easily create a melody as a sequence of these blocks. But there's also a possibility to specify sound frequency as a number in here. For example, I can set it to 10 hertz. Um, and I'll just make it longer so that it's easier to hear. And 10 hertz is impossible for the human ear to hear. Uh, but you can hear 60 hertz. Um, like so. And you can hear up to uh, 15,000 hertz. And I'll just reduce the length just because it's very high pitched. Yeah. Um, but something like 1000 hertz uh, will probably be easier for uh, people to hear. Uh, duration is measured in beats here. Um, the default tempo 
for a microbit. It's 120 beats per minute. So that means that uh, one beat is half of a second. Um, now, ring tone is a similar thing, uh, except um, like I show here, it will play the tone uh, infinitely un until you stop it somehow. Uh, it doesn't make it very useful for making melodies. Uh, we can also uh, use the rest block in here if the melody that you're making has pauses in it. So as you can see here, uh, it stopped for one beat before playing the next tone. Uh, now let's program microbit to play a part of a song using this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making a song using these blocks. And as I'm making it, uh, try and guess what song I'm trying to make. Does anyone have any idea what this song is before I play it? Um, unmute yourself um, and just say the answer. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> yes, correct. Um, so this is what it sounds like. Uh, let's look at how this program works in JavaScript. As you can see, all the music related blocks are in fact calls of built in microbit functions, uh, like which we also call library functions. In the same way that we use DOM functions like document.getElementById or console.log to program web pages. However, in some cases, the libraries are specific to programming environment that we use. It means that we cannot use microbit functions um, in web pages or DOM functions in microbit. However, standard JavaScript commands like if else blocks or while and for loops are the same in web pages and microbit. There's also a number of mathematical array and string functions that work in microbit and web, and web pages the same way. You can also see here that the function uh, uses the numeric value of the frequency as an input. Beat fraction is an enumerator, um, such as icon that we discussed last time. Also, JavaScript allows you to easily save your program. You can just select everything on the screen using Control A then copy to the clipboard using Control C, and then paste your code into a text editor using Control V, and then save the program on your computer. Uh, now let's see what else is available um, in the music tab. Um, 
Here in the music tab, we also have a play melody block, uh, which I'm going to put um, on a pin. So when pin zero is pressed, it will activate it. Um, but the play melody fun, uh, block has this melody editor here. And there's a gallery where you can select predefined melodies to play. Uh, however, we're not allowed to use them in this challenge. In the melody editor, you have eight notes, and these notes have a range of one octave uh, with no uh, sharps or flats, though. So here, let's just make a simple melody. Does anyone know what this melody is? Uh, hold on, I'll actually play it here. Still no? Uh, here in the melody block, we can also change the tempo. Uh, so, I'm going to actually speed it up to, let's just say 400, 400. <laughs> Do you guys recognize the melody now? It's like from the Mario thing in my bomb, I think. Yeah, it's the Mario melody. <laughs> Um, correct. So in here, in the melody uh, editor in blocks, there are some limitations. So we cannot have a melody longer than eight notes. And we can also, we also cannot put um, notes that are outside of this one octave. And we cannot have sharps or flats. Uh, and this is what the melody block looks like in JavaScript. Um, so this is the tempo here. And this is the actual melody. And this melody is written as the name of each note uh, separated by spaces. And these dashes represent the spaces between notes, the rest between notes. In when we're writing melodies in JavaScript, we actually don't have the limitations that we do in blocks. So we can actually make this melody longer. I'll just copy and paste this melody. And so it'll sound like this. Uh, it will actually play the full melody, even though it's longer than eight blocks. However, if we go into the block mode, uh, the melody actually shrunk to eight notes. So if we play it, um, it's only the first part of the melody. And if we go back into JavaScript, it shrunk. So um, if you're writing your melody in JavaScript, I recommend, um, I strongly suggest that you copy uh, your melody and paste it in some sort of text editor so that after the melody is shrunk um, in the block mode, you can easily restore it back in JavaScript. Uh, now, um, in JavaScript, we can also put notes from different octaves. So for example, I'll just add a few rests here. And then I'll put this note here. Um, this G3 just means the note G, but in the third octave. All of these notes by default, if you don't have a number beside them, are in the fourth octave. But since here we specified that we want it to be in the third octave, it'll play G in the third octave. So it will sound like this now.
Um, now in JavaScript, we can also add sharps or flats. So I'll make all of these nodes sharp. For example, uh, like so. And now um, when we play the melody, it will actually be a semitone higher. Uh, yeah. Now, if we go back into blocks, uh, Alice, what's your question? Why does it make it quieter? Like after like some notes and then it gets quieter. Uh, what gets quieter? The melody? Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It's not supposed to get quiet. Uh, and it's not getting quiet on my computer. Yeah, I think it's because. Sorry. I didn't quite hear you there. I think it's because Zoom is lagging. Yeah, it might be. Uh, if you try it on your own, I don't think it'll have a change in volume. Uh, so in here, actually, when we switch into blocks and our melody has sharps, or notes in different octaves. Uh, it just says invalid input in here in the melody. Um, but it still works fine. So if we click on this, it should still play the same melody. Uh, and the melody does not shrink either. Um, now, in terms of other uh, blocks in here. The set volume block uh, changes the sound volume, and the volume here is specified in a range from zero to 255. You may remember that we set the RGB color intensity in the same range in our web projects. Uh, changing volume is one of those features that is required for this challenge. It can be implemented in a similar way as we change color in the web page. So here I'm going to add another event handler. And so when the logo is pressed, it will set the volume to 19. Um, now we'll play our melody. And if we click this, it will become quiet. Also, uh, another thing that I forgot to show you guys about the melody is that uh, with this melody here in JavaScript, we can actually uh, take sheet music and then write all the notes from sheet music in here in this string. Uh, so here, I'll quickly delete this melody and set the tempo to 200. Um, and here, here is the sheet music for Jingle Bells. Um, do you guys see it? Okay, okay, good. So, uh, let's start writing the melody uh, for the right hand part. Now, this note is a D, so we're going to write D, then B, then A, G. Um, and now in here, this is a dotted half note. And uh, a dotted half note is actually worth three beats. So we can just write three Ds. However, um, when writing melodies here, uh, in JavaScript, you actually have the option to set the duration of each note. So instead of writing three Ds, we can just write a semicolon and then the length of the note. Um, when writing the length of the note, four is, uh, the number four is one beat. So that means 12 is three beats. Um, 
Now the next two notes are also D, but they are eighth notes. So they're half of a quarter note. Um, and so we need the duration to be uh, two. Uh, now let's see what this sounds like so far. All right, let's continue. Um, next um, is another D and it's a quarter note. But here we have to write the duration of the note and just say four because um, if we don't put the duration of a note, it'll just take the duration of the previous note, which in this case is two. And we want this to be a quarter note, not an eighth note. Um, so now we're here, and then B, A, G, then E duration 12, then E duration four, then E, C, B, A. Uh, yeah, that's about right. So now if we play this, we get this. Um, this didn't sound quite right. And that is because um, the octave by default is the fourth octave. And here C needs to be in the fifth octave. Uh, so if we write five here and run it again, it should be fine. Yeah, it sounds better now. Now let's continue writing. So here we have F, um, F duration 12, because it's three quarter notes. And then F duration four. Now let's run this and see what happens. That didn't sound right. And that is because in the key signature here, um, this sharp here means that all Fs, unless specified otherwise, are actually sharp. So here we actually have to write sharp on both of these Fs. And now let's uh, see if it sounds better now. Yeah, so now it sounded much better. Um, actually, my sister and I um, wrote the entire uh, Jingle Bell song with uh, Microbit. Um, and here, I'll just paste the code that we had. Um, for this melody, though, that we created, we actually didn't know that you could change the duration of the notes. So we, as you can see here, we kept on repeating the same note over and over again. And this melody is actually pretty long, but here's what it sounds like. Uh, so that is an example of some of the things you can do with melodies. Um, I wrote another melody for Microbit. And 
Uh, this is another example of what you can do with melodies. Does anyone recognize the song? Often dance? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty long. I'm just going to stop it there. Um, so going back into blocks, this is still an invalid input. Um, uh, so I showed you that we can change the volume using this block. So I'll demonstrate again. If we click the logo, this will make it a lot quieter because we're setting the volume to 19. However, uh, there's uh, there's also this volume oval block, which um, which um, seems to be the current volume of the micro bit. You can make it into a feature that displays the volume as a bar on the LED display. And we'll talk about that later in another session. However, there's an interesting way to implement a volume control in a microbit simulator. Um, and that is using the sound level oval uh, in the input tab, uh, which also changes from 0 to 255, the same as volume. Let's try to connect them to each other. So I'm going to put sound level and set volume, and I'm going to put in the forever loop. And now, as a result, we have a very neat volume control in the program, which using the mouse, we can change from to 255, but when you decrease it, it doesn't want to go uh, below 122. Uh, so in order to lower it, uh, you can use the arrow keys, the down arrow key, and to increase it, you can use the up arrow key. And if we play our melody, you, we can see that this actually uh, controls the volume. Yeah, um, that is probably all that I want to explain to you today. Uh, you learned two ways to program melodies in Microbit. Now I would suggest you to choose several melodies, find cheap music, and program these melodies on Microbit. You may use the JavaScript option to save your work if you'll be programming in blocks. Next time, we'll talk about making your own icons and putting all parts of a project together. Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay. Um, then that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Sunday.